Hello, many welcome. Thank you for accepting the invitation, okay, to be my guest on this podcast. It's an honor, okay, to welcome you. <laughs> oh, it's my honor. I'm so um, happy to be here. Thank you, Sophia. It's a pleasure. I can't wait for today's discussion because energies are quite intense. Yeah. So let's, help. let's help the collective feel good. Yeah. Let's start uh, at the beginning, okay? Tell us a little more about yourself, what you do, your story, how you came across um, at your life uh, with personal development and share with us a little bit more of your journey of self acknowledgement and healing. Oh, wonderful. So um, as a little kid, a little child, I was very spiritual, very religious, actually. And I used to be called old wise man as a kid. And I used to love hanging out with old people and children and animals. So it was very strange. I didn't hang out with people my own age, okay? And I grew up in quite a troubled household. There's a lot of problems, but I was always the problem solver saying, let's talk, let's be kind, let's, and, and, and like literally my family would say, I don't know why you're born here. You should be born in some like religious house, like, you know, of a priest or something because you are different. And as a kid, I was fascinated by, you know, mythology and religion and gods and goddesses and magic. I was very strange in that way because I loved it. I used to watch the movies of um, like the characters and think I was flying and I was, I thought I had magic. Um, and then growing up, like I was very religious, but then when I found out that I was gay, I felt really like, oh my God, because my family and the background and all the people, they would judge me. So I kind of left the religion and became more spiritual. Um, initially, I just left religion. And when I left religion, I became very depressed. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to hold me. So then I found spirituality at university and that got me really excited. So I got into yoga first, and then I became a yoga teacher, then I got into meditation, became a meditation teacher. And then I just became really obsessed with being happy. Okay. And often people say to me that they feel my energy is very positive. And that's because I invest in being that way. When I discovered that happiness is a choice, I didn't realize that. No one tells you these things. I thought, it's a choice? Oh my God, it's my thoughts? Oh my God. So then I started really focusing on purifying and, and being happy and listening to like Abraham Hicks, Law of Attraction, Louise Hay, Eckhart Tolle, and just reading. And I used to give everyone crystals and books and just like, they used to say, how did you change your life? And I was like, this and this and this, because everything started working out really good. And then I did loads of courses of like, you know, neurolinguistic programming and, and therapies and counseling and coaching and loads of different things I did and I didn't know why I was doing it just for me and then I started first I started helping LGBT people so lesbian gay bisexual trans people I was doing a lot of work with that I still do and I wrote books for that and I did workshops and then I started general spiritual like you know meditation and, and things like that but I always had a job on the side because I work in human rights Currently, I work in like um, equality and, and um, diversity for um, climate justice, sustainability, you know, the planet. Wow. So I'm doing that four days a week. But the rest of the time, you know, um, basically, I was doing a lot of work to help people. But then I went off um, social media for a while, maybe one year, two years. I don't know. I just disappeared because, you know, I just was done with it. Yeah. Until last year, then I came back because... Um, I've been going to loads of like retreats and spiritual like healing and meditation. And I, then I started going on Abraham Hicks cruises, which are amazing, you know? And after I left the cruise in Italy, Rome, I met someone which now I know is a twin flame. I heard of the concept. I wrote about the concept, but until you live the concept, it doesn't make sense. It's like someone saying, I saw God, and you look at them, you think, you're crazy. You need to go to an asylum, mental institute. But until you actually have the experience, and that just flipped my world. Because I even told my twin when I met him the first time that I am happy 98% of the time. I'm a happy person, okay? I am good, I'm positive, I'm living life. I, I don't need anything because I have everything. I got money, I got 
success. Everything in my life was so good. Okay. I wasn't any bad place. And then he comes along and he triggers out everything that was, I think I was putting a happy sticker on my life and I wasn't dealing with the things underneath and I was looking for external validation as well. Um, and then basically my life just fell apart. And last year, I tell you, I had health problems. I lost my job. I was in deep depression. I wanted to like, you know, finish life and go out of this world. But then I did the work. I did the inner work. And then now my life last year just got better and better and better. Like a new job, more money and all the things I wanted. I can work anywhere. I can live anywhere. I can work flexible hours, only a few hours. Then I started doing my social media. That went really successful. And I just became a better version of me, looking better, feeling better. Um, yeah, but still like, it's like a different level. Of, I still get triggered and still in pain, but it's a different level now. I understand you perfectly, man. <laughs> but um, when you meet your twin flame, you, you are already, you were already conscious of the, of the concept you- I was. Okay. You know, people say, oh, they can't be your twin flame unless because if you already knew what it is. Listen, I had I'm a spiritual person who writes books and does workshops. I heard of most things, okay? But reading it, I thought it was just a lovely relationship, it's beautiful. I don't know it was this. <laughs> But how and when do you your your path cross with the concept of twin flames or karmic or let's talk about um the i know the labels are very dangerous okay very dangerous but um let's use it for 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 a bit more um when you came across in your path with the concept uh and why 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 do you in your studies uh, why why and when do you come across this concept of twin flame Okay, I think Twin Flame came slightly later, but I think after the age of 25, I was like very hell bent on finding out about soulmates and relationships because I always wanted to have children, get married, settle down, but I was struggling getting a partner and um, I don't know, maybe being gay. And then I experienced a lot of racism in the gay community as well. And um, a lot of the, you know, a lot of gay people just sleep around do drugs. I don't know, not a lot of them, but the ones I saw were. So I couldn't really see any sort of like relationships and family. And I wanted to know, like, how do I do this? And I was also traveling a lot. I didn't stay in the UK. I was living abroad in this country, that country for work. So it was very challenging to get a relationship when you're always traveling. So I was like, how and like, how do I? So I started researching soulmates because that's what everybody knows, right? And I think Abraham Hicks talks about it quite a lot. And then I think... Twin Flames came from Teal Swan, who is a spiritual person on YouTube as well. And I learned about the concept and I was writing in my first book called Bollywood Gay, it's a self-help for LGBT, um, you know, Indians, whatever else, South Asians. I was writing about relationships and I've written a section on Twin Flames. And also there's like a worksheet at the end about how to find your soul. I don't know what I was writing. I just read off the internet. Like seriously, when I read it now, I'm like, you didn't, you didn't even have a clue like yeah. what it meant actually. Interesting. It's, you know what? I am um, the other day I saw an advert on YouTube and it's Tinder, you know, Tinder, the dating app, they had an advert on YouTube and it was like, find your twin flame. Or, oh. I was like, it's gone. No. No, it's so great. Nobody wants to meet your twin flame. It's so ah, it's it's the the ego that most devastating. You no no I I no 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 absolutely not. And you share a lot and uh, and and I meet you in the um, in um in TikTok. Uh, I came across your your page and um it brings much it 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 bring me much more peace and um, and consciousness around this concept uh, uh, twin flame and relationships and you share a lot of content thank thank you for for that about twin flames and karmics and soulmates there are tr in tremendous labels around uh, the the several types of relationships that exist 
tell, tell me more um, about the difference, okay? Because you study a lot, you, you experience uh, also a lot. Um, what the difference between them all, karmic, uh, soulmates, twin flames, whatever? Yeah, it's a good question. And a lot of people use the, 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 the terms incorrectly. And there's businesses making money, making twin flames as like unicorns and rainbows and your ideal lover, it's gonna be so great. And you're gonna love this so much. And there's so many on, on social media who say, this is my twin flame. And, and it's like the girl and the guy and they're both spiritual and he's so happy. And it's like, no, oftentimes you're, if not always, you're very different. You're like, one is spiritual, one is not. There, it, there is cases when the both are, but let's let's go into it. So everyone's heard of soulmates, yeah? And the general concept people think is soulmate is a loving relationship. It's another soul that you connect with and that's it. And people will say, I've got one soulmate. Some people say there's more, but actually a soulmate is just someone who your soul connects with, yeah? So it could be friends family it can be romantic partners and depending on where you are if you are aligned and happy you have a happy interaction but if you are misaligned you're not happy you're in a bad place your soulmate will be attracted to you and they will also be the same so it can easily be someone when you're driving and they are you're in an angry place and they are road raging and you're fighting that's a soulmate also and that's where people would say that's a karmic right someone a karmic is a term of someone you meet who's a different another soul who helps you to resolve karma that you have so any sort of things that you need to resolve any sort of um misalignment any negative programming any past life stuff any ancestral trauma that you've got unresolved they come into your life to basically trigger that so that you can heal but with a karmic with a soulmate what happens is as you heal they don't have to heal because they are not your divine counterpart. They're not your mirror. Well, essentially everything is a reflection, but a twin flame is your complete reflection. Now the concept is one soul split in two, and then basically you are of the same frequency. Now, some people believe that there's a pyramid. There's so many theories out there yeah. Believe. Some people think that everyone's got a twin flame, some people don't. Some people believe there's only 144,000 pairs. And some people believe that there's a pyramid and at the top, you've got God. So you've got God at the top and then you've got your two twin flames. And from there, all your soul family emerge. So from, from, the, from God's source, um, the soul is split in two, positive and negative, alpha and omega, masculine and feminine. And then from that, all your soul family emerge. Um, comes from basically from the twin flame so they're higher up on the hierarchy I don't know what is true all I know is this it's uh, out of this world connection so when you meet your twin flame when I met my twin flame when I first met him it was dark I felt like the sun walked into the room it was so bright I couldn't look up I had to look down as I came forward to him I saw all the past lives bam 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 and I also realized oh you're the one from a very young age, twin flames are pre-programmed to uh, understand and identify their twin flame. So I always knew my twin flame was Mediterranean, you know, green eyes, muscular, six foot three, tall, hot guy. Always knew that. Okay. Always attracted to also white guys because that was my twin flame. They look like him. So that happened. And then basically we started being telepathic. You feel very safe with your twin flame. You feel very peaceful. You feel very... Um, like innocent, like a virgin. And then with your twin flame, if you get to get intimate, you have a Kundalini awakening and your chakras go bam, 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 bam. You got your soul goes outside the body, time stops. The, the, everything around you dissolves. You go into the cosmos and you may even journey shamanically. It's called Hero Scamos when you have this experience. Some twin flames don't get to this level because they still have a lot of trauma to heal. But if you get to this level, you may um, shamanically journey into the past lives, into the future, into the ancestral lineages and heal things and uh, remove those negative templates. But anyway, you see your twin flame as this angelic being. It's not a human sexual experience that you have with other human beings. It's not of this world. It's godly. It's divine. You understand the meaning of life. And 
you basically connect to them in a way that's so deep and you understand this is the person I've always looked for my entire life and you see them as an angelic being and there's a connection. But then what happens is the triggers start coming for them, especially, and for you, but for them first, because one is a divine masculine, one is a divine feminine. And that, I, I don't really like those terms. You can you call it alpha, omega, or positive and negative, whatever. So twin flames share a chakra system. The, the spiritual awakened one is the one with the higher, uh, who's more um, evolved in the higher chakras. And the, the other one who's more unawakened is known as the matrix twin, is more the lower chakra. So they're more involved with the 3D world. They're very much involved in sexual, um, their sexuality and money, power, security. Whereas the divine feminine, the, the spiritual one is more interested in sort of God and the universe. So it's like two polarities clashing in a way together and they're fitting each other. Whereas with soulmates and other beings, you don't share a chakra system, okay? So you're sharing this system, which is the energy points. And then the triggers come when you meet soon after, maybe like a couple of weeks later, eight weeks later, maximum. And then one of you, which is usually the divine masculine, who is the, the more um, worldly 3D based, they get scared. They don't understand the connection. Their triggers come up. Everything they've buried, the fear, the unconscious stuff comes up for them. It's very, very anxiety driving for them because the energy is cataclysmic and they have nothing they have no choice in but running because it's like two magnets. And when the two magnets come and they're not aligned, they repel. So the, the, the spiritual one, the divine feminine becomes very much an addictive energy towards the divine masculine. And he cannot give it back to her because he, he gets repelled. So he has to put his addictive energy onto other things, work, sex, drugs, all the stuff. As soon as you meet as twin flames, you are compelled to empty yourself of all the impurities. The divine masculine often does it physically. That's why you see them doing all the crazy stuff physically, like the sex and the karmics. And they run after old relationships and they go back into work and they do all the things to avoid. They want to numb with drugs and they want to avoid any connection with you. They don't want to think about you. And you're being blasted all around them, the thoughts, and they want to shut it off. So they don't look at the signs and synchronicities and they go back into their old life. But they can't, they can't do that for long. Now, the spiritual divine feminine, she becomes very addictive. When I say she, he, it's just the energy, it doesn't matter, it's not male or female. The divine feminine becomes very addicted to the masculine and sees the masculine running away from all this love and, and beauty that sh they think that there is. But in the beginning, both of them are in their distorted energies because they have a lot of toxicity and it's not healed. So the divine feminine can be very controlling, very anxious, very um, manipulative and very... Um, fearful, running away from themselves, not loving themselves, feeling unworthy, wanting, you know, being codependent, wanting um, security from outside of themselves. And the divine masculine that repulses them. So they run, that's just icky and nasty, and they can't even deal with themselves, let alone with you. So they just run, they exit. And that's when the divine feminine starts going through their ego death. So the divine feminine will start to basically, first of all, start seeing signs and synchronicities and dreams. Like for me, when I left, and came back to the UK from seeing my twin, my twin's higher self, which is like their, their, their 5D or ghost, whatever you want to call it. It's so weird and strange, like explaining these things to people. But that self just follows you around. When I would be working, when I'd be sleeping, when I'm in eating, cooking, doing anything, my twin flame would follow me around in the ghost form, looking at me like, actually, I'd wake up in the morning, I'd be sleeping there next to me. The, the, the ghost version. Then I started seeing my children, my spirit children. So their, their spirits following me around. I'll be in the office working and he'll be walking around, la 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 la, with the kids. And I'm like, I'm having a whole like relationship here and in a, not, not in a physical way. And I'm like, this is something is up here. I have never experienced this in my life. Then the dreams. And my twin flame came in the dream. And the first dream he said to me was, you got to take it slow with me because, you know, I've got a lot of things to resolve. And I'm like, okay. And then after that, uh, and then there was like sexual dreams as well. But after that, he started learning my languages, my Indian languages, and he's trying to understand me. And, and, and basically the story just comes through. And then we got married in the dream world. We were already married. We've got two kids. We've got a great houses everywhere. And we're having a great time. But the 3D world is completely different because my twin is running and we're in separation. So you get the separation. 
um, you get all the signs, the dreams, the synchronicities for the divine feminine because th she's more awakened and aware and, and can notice these things, whereas the divine masculine chucks it all off. There's a lot of pain. All the trauma comes up, the abandonment, the rejection, and the divine masculine is compelled to not only empty their cup of their ancestral karmic toxicity, but also to mirror the triggers that you both hold. Okay, they have to do it. And the divine feminine, it's uh, it's really, it's impossible to hate your twin flame for a long period of time. You have to heal because there's so much unconditional love shared between you. So the divine feminine is going through all of these ego deaths and pain. It's horrific. And they heal, they ascend, their life falls apart, but then it falls back into place better than before. They get younger, more attractive, everyone's after them. Uh, but they're not interested in it, anyone else. And then eventually they learn they have to balance the energy, they learn about twin flames, and they have to ground the energy back to themselves and bring it back and be in peace. And when that happens, that's when the divine masculine goes through their healing and uh, because they feel the absence of the energy. And then they go through their dark nights and their ego deaths, which a lot of them are going through right now, this year and next year. And uh, if they do not align with what the divine will is, which is to get us into union, because Twin Flame's purpose is to bring unconditional love on earth, to heal all the ancestral programming. So if the divine, often the divine masculine is running and then they get blasted. And when I mean blasted, it means the divine or God or source puts them on the right path. So they will have things happen out of the blue, like tower moments, which will force them back onto the path to say, that's not the right direction. No more drugs, no more sex, no more, hiding and running you need to go back because the divine feminine is the leader she already can see the insights the future etc and the divine masculine as she heals he has to heal he has to mirror that and um, he doesn't understand it and the way they learn is through getting their fingers burnt through getting blasted through getting hurt because they're very immature very childish they haven't resolved things they're very stuck in the lower chakras in the 3d world and you see the 3d world is crazy yeah. so they don't trust women they don't trust divine feminine energy they think you're out to control them manipulate them they want to live their lives they want to be that bachelor but as they start to heal they also start to be seen as divine as a god and then they can't start to return uh it seems that one has an anxious attachment and the other has the avoidment attachment. You know, that's yeah, true. and that's true. Um, but as you heal, that resolves itself, you know. As the divine feminine heals their avoidant, um, so their anxious attachment, because they're anxious, so they're going outside, they're running away from themselves, and as they come into peace, then the avoidant twin flame also grounds down as well into um so it's anxious, avoidant, and what's the other one? Uh, free, uh, freeze, free, uh, dis dissociation, freeze, uh, I don't... No, like stable attachment or something it's called. Yeah, that one. Yeah. There's three. There's anxious, avoidant, and... And... Uh... Secure, secure attachment. Ah, they secure, call, yeah. yeah, they both become secure the attachment. Goal, the, go the, goal, yeah, the goal is to find that secure attachment between the two energies, the, the, the divine feminine and divine masculine. And because of the triggers, there are some simi um, similarities with the karmic relations. Right? How yeah. to avoid? How to avoid illusions and delusional ideas and actions on the twin flame journey because of that similarities with the karmics because of the triggers. Yeah, you are correct. And sometimes people also confuse twin flames with high level soulmates because it's so lovely and amazing. And I got a synchronicity. Oh, my God. Um, with my ex, when we were together for six years, actually, I was seeing 1111 and other signs. And at times it was a little toxic. And I was like, is this the twin flame relationship? He runs, he returns. But it wasn't. OK, the way you know if it's a twin flame relationship, it's so obvious. First of all, you get the Kundalini away. You know, your chakras open, you have ego deaths on, it's like on like speed, like this, the, you rapidly ascend, you feel like you're going to die. You search out how to heal. You can't stop thinking about this person. And it's not just an infatuation like you have with um, someone you fancy, 
but it's like literally you feel their pain, you feel their joy, you hurt, it feels like your body's aching, you have the dreams, you have the synchronicities, the sign, and it's not like just seeing 1111, you see their name, you'll see signs like a hundred times a day, a thousand times a day, and as you try to avoid and run away, then you will get more signs bombarded. If you try to date someone else, you'll feel guilty. They will show up. You can't forget this person. With another person, like after six months, you can move on, right? Six months or a year, you move on. But with this person, you never forget them. And then also, remember I said to you that their 5D self follows you around. So you see their spirit self. Your gifts come online, whether you're psychic, whether you're intuitive, whether you're a healer, whatever it is, they come to you. You get to see um, basically the way in which the whole journey is going to happen. When you hate your twin flame, their 5D self will come and console you and love you and you get all the downloads and, and things like that. And a lot of people want to be twi think they're a twin flame relationship, but they're not. You know, a lot of people are in um, like toxic, narcissistic. So with a narcissist, a narcissist wants to take your energy. And then once they have your energy, they will go away. A twin flame avoids you not because they want you to suffer or they want they don't come in to take your energy they leave because they want to protect you they want to save you it's actually unconditional love even though they can be nasty at times or toxic because of their traits but you will notice as you heal your twin flame will heal so as you do inner work if you become celibate and you commit to yourself they will stop sleeping with you know unless there's some karma to resolve but that can resolve quite quickly and um, if they if basically you um commit to going within yourself and loving yourself, you will see them improve. With a narcissist or a karmic, you will not. A narcissist will love bomb you, take from you, go away, come back. They'll keep coming back in. Whereas a twin flame won't do that as often. And the only reason why a twin flame will run is if the energy is not balanced and you start blaming them and feeling, you know, angry at them. But generally with twin flames, the love is always there. Even despite the pain, yeah. and the hurt there's like this constant unconditional love and that is the sign for me uh that i am in the twin flame journey because that love is always there always oh. always and for me that is the sign that the i was in the twin flame journey because despite of all the love the a type of love that uh, I, I would never experience until right now. This is a type of love that only you and 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 I believe um, there are too much information, too much. It's it's so much. It's so much danger because it's um, one people said this is the right. The other said no, no, this is right. I think I, and I believe that only you. Only you can know internally if if what you are experiencing is, in fact, a twin flame journey or not. Even you, no, nobody can tell you uh, differently. And um, in my case, uh, I had the, the strong connection, the obsessive thoughts, and uh, I, I I'm feeling I'm going crazy, absolutely crazy, and. I, inst I I I I began to install the TikTok application because uh, I don't have it for a long time, and from nowhere, it began appear to me uh, videos and people talking about twin flames and oh my god that's it that's it and and you came across uh, my page um, in that occasion and. And I began to to match the the points, uh, the dots, the um, and it's important for me to inform people and um, and uh, explain what is and 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 that for uh, is my question for you. What um, because the importance of the win the inner work uh, in that journey and all of our lives. Okay. Uh, how do you define inner work and uh, what kind of practices uh, do you usually have that help you in that journey and in your life daily? Uh, can And uh, what you can share with us? Yeah, sure. Just closing off from the earlier conversation, 
if you can move on from your twin flame and forget about them and live a lovely life and get someone else, they're not your twin flame. Okay, so yeah. with the inner work, um, it's a good sign. It's a good. It's a good uh, mark to to take uh, a note. If you can go along with another person, I tried. I tried so hard. <laughs> that, that's a song. Eh? I tried so hard. Uh, not so hard, but um, at some point, I tell to myself, okay, if he doesn't want. To, to heal and I can force him, okay, be, because I love him, I love him uh, as he is at the moment, okay, conscious and conscious with the, all the flaws, whatever, uh, and I talk to myself, if he doesn't want it uh, and does want to uh, um, take take the, um, the leadership and uh, make the work, I will not... Uh, close my heart, okay? I will not chase because that was my pattern in all my um, relationships. relationships. Uh, I I always, I always uh, um, the girl that began the conversation and began, no, no more, no more. Uh, I'm in the, <laughs> I'm, I'm embracing the divine feminine energy to receive uh, and, uh, and aligning uh, and alignment uh, with, uh, with all that is and for me. So um, I don't close my heart, but the per there the, there was a person that entered my life, and we we have one to mount to mount a uh, relationship. But I feel uh, that I was cheating. You feel cheating. guilty. You feel cheating. guilty. Yeah. yeah, I feel guilty uh, because I'm feeling. But in my mind, it was no sphere. Yeah. You are it's doing. Evil. You are move on. You are single, do what the hell you want, but you can't. Yeah, I'm single, I'm beautiful, I'm gorgeous, let's go, let's ride, let's... But no, I'm I'm feeling a deep sadness and, and grief and, uh, and it's so crazy, but it's a good indicator. Let's talk about inner work and your practices. Yeah, so for Twin Flames especially, well, for everyone actually, self-love is the main one. And a lot of us, you know, don't know how to do that. It's like, how do I love myself? What does it mean? Now you can love yourself with all the choices you make. Like, are you honoring yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you eating the right food? Are you looking after your physical self? But also what about your inner self, your inner world and boundaries and respect. And when you get triggered is the main indicator of where your points are that need healing or need well you could say healing or you could say aligning because you're focused on things that are not serving you you've been putting a lot of energy on things that have been kept as a pattern within your psyche and you, you can let it go in, a, in an instant but sometimes uh, twin flames the, they say oh but it's going to take a, a long time and how, how long is going to take him to heal you can heal in an instant by just aligning and letting go of the story um, a really good way that I like to do things with myself or my clients is just working with your inner child. So inner child, inner being, your soul, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter, just within you. And you go into your heart space and you connect with that aspect of yourself and you communicate, you build a relationship, a friendship, because often we don't listen to our inner voice. You know, there might be times when we are numbing ourselves or doing things whether it's smoking eating drinking sex whatever it is to fill a void a pain but really we should talk with that child of ourselves the inner part of ourselves and ask them what do you want from us do you want me to listen do you want me to give you love do you want me to create a safe environment do you feel insecure or anxious do you want me to love you so it's it's basically making a relationship with your inner self and understanding that inner world which a lot of divine masculines have completely disconnected from, completely shut down because of the pain. Mm. But you can build that friendship and allow that inner self of you to be free and liberate them so that they can feel listened, heard, loved, connected. Because, you know, there's times we do things in our physical world because we're trying to, like, suppress or avoid that inner voice. But listening to that inner voice. I remember after lunch, I used to feel quite down and depressed many years ago. I was like, why is that? I've just had a beautiful lunch. But I connected with my inner self and my inner self was like, didn't feel 
deserving to eat or worthy to like have good things, you know, like didn't feel worthy of, of like being treated well. So essentially it's working with your inner self so that your outer self reflects that. And then you start becoming more peaceful, more loving, your energy becomes more beautiful. And then you start treating yourself in that way, in a divine way, you know, someone who honors and respects and loves and values themselves. How do they treat themselves in day-to-day -day life, you know? Do you allow people to disrespect you or you that, that's not a thing anymore now because that's not what you are playing with. You are in a higher level of um, self-love. So yeah, that's the main thing. But then you could do other things. So I, I'm trained in timeline therapy, hypnotherapy, angelic light cold healing, meditation, yoga, neuro-linguistic programming, rewiring the neurons. Recently, I've been doing a lot of plant medicine, which I found quite useful. Whereas before I'd be quite scared of those things because of like um, having people put stuff in my drinks when I was at, at university and, you know, like scaring me with things. But recently I've, start, I've decided to face all fear because fear is an illusion. It's from the ego, it's the mind. And you want to get into the soul, which is the now in love and peace. And you want to have trust, faith, because surrender is very important. So to surrender is to trust that everything, like people say it, but on the journey of Twin Flames, it brings up every shadow and it's very scary. And you start saying, doing, and being in a way that is really ridiculous. So the divine masculine goes back to their childhood and starts acting like a total child, like a baby, a toddler, like throwing everything out the pram and because they're healing all the childhood stuff, right? And the divine feminine becomes so anxious and so like, what if this and what if that? And very mental, comes very much in the mind and ego, doubt. The ego is. surface everywhere. The ego is so much uh, present in, the, in that journey. Brings yeah. all. It's not about shunning or pushing away. Like people want to, I want to block him. I want to get rid of the ego. I want to, I don't like him, blah, blah, blah. You have to integrate because this is you. And the ego is just a tool. Right. Actually, the ego is what Bashar says, channeled by Daryl Anker. The ego's purpose is to anchor your soul on earth and that's it. And it doesn't actually know what else to do. You're giving it too much power. It's the higher mind that allows you to understand intuitively. So basically, it's about getting to a place where you observe the mind, but don't let it take over you. And you're like, it's okay. You can be of the mind or beyond the mind. And that's where plant medicine is very useful. Uh, like mushrooms or ayahuasca or whatever else because you learn to kind of especially mushrooms I find you learn to kind of like see from multiple perspectives so you're not just stuck in that one way of thinking and being and then you can go when you take stuff like rapé which is the tobacco um, yeah. that takes you away from all mind as well you know and ego and it just gets to a place of nothingness um, and then everything is ridiculous so yeah yeah it's about being easy and light about everything, not serious. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What is true love for you? So on the Twin Flame journey taught me about divine love, which is essentially my own love reflected. And it's, our, it's all of our loves reflected. The creator, creation, is created from love. And there is this human love, which is based upon the three deeds, obligation, jealousy, competition, fear, you know, all the abandonment, rejection. I took you here. You need to take me there. For your birthday, I did this. What are you doing for me? You are hanging out with boys. You shouldn't be. You should be at home, you know, because there's a lot of fear. If you, if you hang out with boys, then it means you don't love me. And what if you leave me? Where's the twin flame journey? It's telling you that nothing can be taken away from you because you already have everything. And your twin flame is you anyway, it's your soul. So it's never separate from you. It's always with you. So no matter what happens, no matter what is said, no matter who they're with or you're with, you would always be together. You are always together. And in the physical, you're always gravitated back. So there's that level of deep trust and faith and love, unconditional love that no matter what, things will work out. And that's the divine love, which helps to heal all separation or programming or fear or ego and brings you back into your truth and your alignment, which is freedom. So beautiful, yeah, I agree. Freedom, freedom. We are already free, <laughs> but uh, the illusion of the mind um, make, um, make difficult to perceive that uh, reality that 
we are abundant, we are free, we are all, right? with all that exists. And what's the worst love advice <laughs> you have ever received? Oh, I don't know. people always say, if you don't love yourself, uh, how, it, how the hell is someone going to love you? But that's not the worst advice. That's the true thing. But often we don't know how to love ourselves. But the worst advice I got was from this woman I worked with. And I was, she, was, she was in a relationship. And I was like, how did you get into a relationship? She says, when you are desperate enough, you will just be with someone. Like, basically, you will grab someone and just be with them. Like, you will just find someone on the street and that's it. You say, I, 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 you know, like, kind of, you know, just will accept anything almost. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have no standards. About, yeah. So if you're desperate enough, you'll, you know, you'll just go with someone. No, that's no, not No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> you got to be in a place of total love for yourself. Vibration yeah. of love attracts love. Yeah. And the best advice and the best love advice that you have received until right now. Again, it's going to be about loving yourself, but how to truly do that. It's like when you are at a place of, you know, what is unconditional love? People say, don't have expectations. This It's very hard to understand from an ego mind that, you know, the because ego... I, I, I think, I really think the mind done, don't understand the concept of unconditional love. Look at Jesus, for 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 for, for instance. The, the mind don't understand why she's uh, he's so kind, but there are so many people who, who hate the, him and... What? Why that continuously be kind and generous and loving? The mind don't understand. And it's impossible for the mind, for the ego. The ego don't understand. Point. Fine, fine, final point. But the heart, the heart knows, knows more. The heart knows more. It's like because in the 3D matrix, it is built upon I and me and fear. And that's where the, the, the divine masculine resides. It's about safety and money and sex and protection and uh, top dog, dog eat dog, I'm better than you because it's all about mine and yours and separation. And we need that in order to understand because when we are non-physical, everything is everything and everything is abundant and it becomes very same, same, same. There's obviously different levels and, and, and gradients of it all and gray areas or whatever you want to call it. But on this planet, you realize the absence, Right the absence of that unity consciousness. So you're kind of like learning, it's like a game really, um, how to get back and tap into that. And you do need a certain aspect. I was with my shaman like a few months ago and doing mushrooms. And I, I was like, yeah, I'm in oneness and I don't need protection, it's all good. And he was there doing all his, whatever he was doing. And he's like, actually, but you do, because you don't realize that in the 3D, you can be attacked by things and, and beings and, and non-physical stuff and not everything has your best interest. So there is a need for me to be here because I was like, why don't you just sit down and stop doing your hand gestures, whatever you're doing? And he's like, no, but I need to create safe space. I need to make sure things don't come and harm you because you can sit here and we can be like, oh, I'm so in the angelic realm and I'm in 12D and 5D or whatever D. And I'm so happy and wonderful. And someone can come and just rob you, you know? <laughs> so there is an aspect of kind of having your boundary. And that's where the divine masculine comes in. And we all have that within us. And the divine masculine is like that. They're very possessive, very protective. Because they know when you're of light or like a diamond in the 3D, you're at risk. Because look what happened to Jesus. He got killed, right? So if Jesus had his divine masculine energy there protecting him, he maybe would have survived, you know? So there is an element of, we have to be realistic of the, not everyone is at that vibrational level of unconditional love and they can feel threatened and triggered. Some would love it. Some want you, but some want to take from you. Yeah. And that's the, the, the thing where we have to have that ego. It plays a role. Everything has a part. Like each of my fingers have a role in my body. Okay, each part of my body has a role and I must lovingly, unconditionally accept it too. And we must also lovingly accept the ego and the mind. The ego has to anchor the soul and the mind and, and ego helps to protect us. It's about utilizing things for what they're made for. Yeah. If I utilize my heart, pumping my blood around my body, it's great. But if I make my heart into my foot, it's going to get squashed. <laughs> 
it's it's self self awareness and uh, and 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 you you came inward with you, with with yourself and um and learn to know you and recognize the purpose of of all the parts of you and integrate them and um and ascend uh, your your vibration do you believe so that play, play with them too it's 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 a joy to be on earth that's why we're here yeah. so being dismissive of money and clothes and a, a fun lifestyle and eating great food wine we can be very dismissive that's not spiritual but you're here to play you're yeah. here to enjoy you can die and go into the non-physical and be just nothingness if you want but whilst you're here you've got to appreciate and love your ego your mind the spiritual all aspects are connected as one and that's where we mustn't reject the divine masculine which does represent the 3d world yeah yeah interest perspective yeah because i believe that um if you are rejecting anyone or any kind of thing in the physical reality you are not being spiritual okay yeah. spirituality the true spiritual spirit spirituality or the true spiritual person don't neglect or reject uh, anything or anyone integrates okay uh, accept and integrate and uh, and learn to set boundaries okay and said yes to the things and person um, that must uh, uh, said yes and the knows uh, the same thing. Yeah, because you have a personal choice, right? You yeah. go to a restaurant or you go to a buffet, you don't eat everything unless you want to, but you're selective. You know, today I want to have a pizza, tomorrow I want to have a burger. You're selective. You yeah. take what you want in the moment now. And you don't like say, oh, there's a pizza in the in the restaurant. I'm not going in there. I don't like pizza. The pizza is not going to end up in your mouth unless you order it. Okay. <laughs> so it's about basically using what you want to use in the moment. And then next day, you, it's a playground. It's a toy store. It's a, it's a sweet shop. Just because they like that today doesn't mean you reject it or judge it or blah, blah, blah. You just do what you want to do and do what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely uh last 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 question do you believe that uh, all twin flames um are meeting one another in the final <laughs> on this that is the purpose okay is, or, or or is that possible that the twin flames um i think that it's possible okay because uh, i believe that we shared many previous past lives so uh some some twin flames eventually come together in union in this lifetime, maybe others not. What, what is your approach and uh, opinion about that? The, the union, the, the union. Yeah, the union. So you create your reality whether you like it or not, okay? So whatever's happening, whether it's good or bad, it's your own creation. So you have some twin flames, alleged twin flames, because I don't think everyone is, um, who will say, it's not going to happen for me in this lifetime. Well, then you manifest that, right? That's the timeline you're going to get. And then some say, you know, it's it's there, it's we're in union. It depends. So do you believe it's going to happen or you don't believe it's going to happen because that's the timeline you're going in. Second of all, in order to get things, you have to have to do things, right? You have to do the alignment work. You have to let go of the negativity. You have to ascend. Now, there is this thing and concept of divine will. Some people say free will, but there is a divine play going on as well. And if one of you choose to be in union, the other one has to, because you're the same energetic soul, right? So if the divine feminine, for instance, chooses union and chooses to be in union with the, within themselves, outer union will happen. It takes time be because of our own egoic distortions, because we're not just trusting and allowing and being happy. You know, we get stuck up in this like romantic notions, which is more soulmate. This is different. This is about ascension and inner union and getting out of that sort of negativity. But yes, if you choose union, you'll get union. If you do the inner work, you'll get you'll get the results. If you put in in the work, you you're gonna bound you're bound to succeed. You're bound to succeed if you you're gonna study an exam and you don't learn, you don't go to the classes and you expect to pass unless you're a genius or it's gonna happen anyway. Then, but usually you have to study you got to go to the classes you got to do the exam 
So if you do the work and you say, I'm going to pass, you have a positive mindset, you get there. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Any final advice for about love in, 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 in general or and in, in the twin flame journey? Any final advice that you can share with us? I think we make too much of everything and we make too much seriousness of everything and we need to lighten up and have fun. And we need to stop feeling like we're hyperventilating and drowning. Like <laughs> We need to calm down and chill and relax and understand we are already loved, protected, happy, joyful. Everything is already manifest. We just have to surrender and allow and know the creator created us for a purpose and therefore creation has a a, me a methodology in which way it's going to work out and creation is far bigger than you or me and the creator is going to do what it's going to do and trust it know that if you are born and if you have met this person there's going to be something going to happen about it because otherwise why would you go through so much you know and it's beyond my comprehension and it's beyond yours so why don't we just sit back Why don't we just do what we can do now? We can't control anyone else. All we can do is have a good life, love ourselves, be happy, choose to trust the process and let it unfold. Let it surprise and delight you rather than wrestling it to the ground. And when we're trying to wrestle it and control it, it scares the other person anyway. They don't want to be controlled. They're scared. But if you're very chilled and relaxed, they're going to want to be around you. Yeah. So I think my advice is really understand that when you try to control, it's not going to work and it only hurts you. You will get annoyed and angry. You will have ego deaths and it's painful. Yeah. It gets intense because of the ego and control. But when you say, you know what, what's going to happen is going to happen. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to let go. You know, God's got this because it's too much for me to deal with. It's too stressful. I don't want to deal with this. I, I want to just be happy and in love, joyful, and blissful. And the other person, they have to learn how they got to learn. They got to do what they got to do. It's not easy for them either. And if they did bad things against you, they will suffer. And they we don't want them to suffer, but they will learn and, and they have they get blasted. Okay. So we don't need to be the person who gives out justice and you did me and I. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, makes us angry inside, makes us ill. So let it be, let it go. Life is much more than, if you're on the journey of Twin Flames, it's not about romance, it's not about love, it's not about a relationship at the beginning. It happens, but it's about, first of all, being prepared to have that relationship. Most relationships are toxic. Most relationships are so destructive. And like in the beginning, you asked the differences with soulmates, after six months or a year, the chemistry is gone. The sex is gone. The distortion, the toxicity is, is just comes to the surface after six months. It's beautiful in the beginning. And then all your crap comes up and you're fighting like cats and dogs. Whereas with a twin flame, you have a great preview in the beginning of what is possible. And then the toxicity comes very quick to show you, this is what you manifested. This is what you want. Twin flames wanted divine love. This is what you will get. But at the moment, you've got all this toxicity and it needs to go. You need to get rid of it. In, in between, there are so much toxicity, yeah. You need okay. to get rid of it. So like at uh, Lionsgate Portal 888 um, this year, I asked a lot of my followers to write down their love story. And then now what's happening is you've asked to get it, then all the stuff that's getting in the way in between the blocks need to go because otherwise you won't get there, you know? So you have to let all that go. And then once you've let it all go, then you have that divine love because you are worthy of it now. You've always been worthy of it, but you thought you were not. Yeah. That's all. Thank you, Manny. Thank you so much for your presence and for your uh, sharing uh, information with us, right? A pleasure. If we can help others, it helps us too. I find when I speak with Twin Flames, it heals me. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.